We live in Bengal, which is a very small rural hamlet in Dutchess County. We live in an old church that was built in 1820. It's a really beautiful, plain structure. I think it might have been Baptist. It's very Shaker-like. And lived there for about 18 years. And I have never had a separate studio space from where I lived ever since I started making jewelry and had children. So I was watching this little cottage across the street slowly rot, essentially. Nobody had been living here for a long time. So when I was able to, I managed to buy it, and it needed a lot more work than I initially thought, but it ended up being completely worth it. I think especially for me, because my sense of scale is very small, it's sort of smaller than a matchbox, I do have a showroom where people can come and shop directly. It's sort of the first time I've been able to have a direct relationship with my customers. When people ask me how I started, I often go back to my beginnings in high school. I used to spend hours making little rooms in matchboxes. There's something visceral to me about focusing in on a small scale and finding a whole world. I've always loved to carve hands. I think that's part of my first series of pieces, uh, even while I was still in college, was to do uh, carve a pair of hand earrings that were sort of holding onto the earlobe. And hands mean so much. They create, they caress, they touch, they gesture, they are just such an important part of our beings as humans. The eye pieces sort of started, there was a, a 19th century tradition of painting an eye on ivory or on parchment, and they were often set in gold and surrounded by pearls, and you'd give that to your loved one, and it meant that I'm watching over you. It's a lovely sentiment. So I furthered that idea by including all the senses. Pearls are amazing. Pearls are the result of a really uncomfortable oyster. <laughs> A, you know, a little piece of, of irritant gets inside a pearl and this is what it does to make its stomach stop hurting. The pearl industry has changed quite a bit in the past few years. The Chinese have really figured out how to culture quite beautiful pearls for very little money and yet there's still these Tahitian and South Sea pearl material that is really quite rare and it's sensitive to climate change and to pollution and they really are treasures of the sea. to Pratt and studied sculpture there, which was actually really great, I think, in the sense that the jewelry department had some hammers and torch and an enameling machine, but it was, it was so basic and rudimentary that a lot of what I've done is to sort of figure out a way to make the vision that I have in my head from more of a sculptural background, which means, in my case, a lot of carving in wax. When I finished, Ted Muling was just becoming really well known and he was my dream job. And luckily he needed help right away. He was doing a show in Paris in a few weeks and he said, well, sure, come on over, but I live in Brooklyn. So do I. It turned out he lived right next door to me. He was who I was hearing in the middle of the night, you know, at two o'clock making the same noise that I make now all the time. I had been in business for about three years and I was doing a project. I was working uh, on a show for Issei Miyake. So it seemed perfect. It was kismet. It was like, okay, come on over. I think it's important to remember that Gabrielle and I met in our 20s. There was so much unknown ahead and we kind of had that kind of courage of of not knowing. There's no reputation to uphold, so it was kind of a fearless time. My friend Ingo Maurer, the lighting designer, he came up with the idea, he said, just open up a space and do it like a medieval workshop where you have your things up in the front and you have the workshop behind. And that's when I got my first store down on Green Street. It was a funky part of Soho at the time. I included Gabriella's work with my work in that store. But Gabriella was making rings, and then she was doing the hands and feet and body parts, which were kind of strange and maybe even a little sinister, but kind of amusing. There's always humor with Gabriella, which I think is important. I think that's an indication of intelligence. So this clipper ship, I thought was just, I love the idea of um, having a voyage be taking place alongside your ears. So there's something wonderful about the idea of a giant hand coming along and picking this ship up out of the water. It's dripping with sapphires. And it's a little ridiculous. I've always come at my work to be small sculpture, and the hair comes just further that notion. 
This is buffalo horn. With this, I just used the curve that was already in the curve of the bone. You know, they come in this horn shape. Same thing with these butterfly wings that are also made out of buffalo horn. And the curve that's in here is the curve that's inherent in the bone itself. The most important work to me, especially if it's carved, is, is the whole carving process in the wax. And uh, that's really kind of meditative work. I do truly have wonder for nature and the tiny things in nature and the things that would be maybe ignored by other people. Because it is all miraculous and amazing. Insects to me are completely fascinating and the process of carving these pieces out of wax, this was the piece I was saying took two weeks just to carve this thing and somewhere in that process I feel that I, I can almost become this creature. Part of my inspiration for this is our culture's general fear of aging, I find really kind of sad. And I love the idea of women celebrating their decay and letting us just grow shelf mushrooms on ourselves. I've made three different sizes of branches that can then be arranged in any form. And I can add different stone elements that can be like moss or leaves or rust or lichen. I almost never polish metal because I find shiny surface is too distracting and takes away from the sculptural aspect of the form. Culture generally is a conversation. Design is, it goes back and forth, it's the way things move forward. Art is not my intention. I don't understand what art is in the 20th century, but or the 21st century for that matter. What we do, I think, is you try to get, pick up something essential the texture of it or, you know, of a mushroom that almost glows with, with life and, and dew on it, but the dew happens to be a piece of moonstone or something. You kind of, in a small way, make these revelations for people and, and make them see the way you do. These mushroom forms that she has been doing lately, she sees a beauty that other people wouldn't see. One of my favorite things that Gabriella gave me is this necklace she made from an owl pellet, the little bones. For her to find beauty in these little pelvic bones and femurs and vertebrae from a mole or a vole or something that an owl like digested and spat out is so Gabriella kind of fearlessly investigating what an owl pellet is and then finding great beauty in it. There's a lot of different people that help me get my work accomplished. I have a, a caster who helps make molds, and there are stone cutters, there are stone setters. All my fantastic assistants who help me uh, set the work. The goldsmithing work is definitely more refined. So I've been working for Gabriella over 10 years now. And um, so prior to this one, I do gold fabrication and stone setting. So sometimes it'll be making the mechanism for a uh, pendant or a brooch, um, and uh, oftentimes it's doing a lot of these um, really gorgeous stacked rings. I wanted this shape replicated in different stones, so I carved this oval lens shape in hard wax, and I sent it to these stone cutters in Hong Kong that do really beautiful cutting. In order to make this, it actually requires very fine goldsmithing. This piece is cut out from the back, and I'm left with this sort of wonderful piece of scrap. It just seemed to really lend itself well as a canvas for whimsical Paul Clay-like drawings. I think Gabriella has a very balanced way of looking at the world. I loved her jewelry, and then I loved her husband, and then I loved her sons um, as she grew. And she, she juggled a lot. Gabriella has true beauty, and inner beauty and outer beauty. I like goofy people too, and Gabriella has her certain goofy qualities, but she has true grace. Gabriella's um, great love. This past year, I had a really exciting opportunity to work with my husband, Chris, who's a wonderful furniture designer. I learned so much about Chris's work, even though we've been married for 27 years. You know, we've collaborated before. We brought up a couple of great kids together. Uh, you know, I think we've, we've 
shied away from it a little bit in the past because uh, our, you know, our, our life here is so close, you know, with, with the house and bringing up the kids. Ralph Pucci invited Chris and me to do a collaborative show together here at his gallery. Chris took a picture of the standing dead elm tree that he actually used in all of these pieces that are in the show. This was one of the few pieces that I did incorporate my one-of-a-kind bug creatures into, and I just loved the idea of them crawling around. These tortoises were really, really fun to work on, and we put these really great sort of uh, multi-directional uh, rollers on them. This is my lily pad table collection, which is directly based off of the jade lily pads that you saw in my studio. It required a lot of refining to get this edge right, and the fact that there's a, a slight concave surface to all the tables. They nestle nicely, it's fun to move them around um, in groups of three or five, like in gardening, odd numbers. Um, and they're just my, it's my pond, sitting on my turtle in the pond. <laughs> I started spotting these beautiful standing dead trees, most of them being elm because of the Dutch elm disease that a lot of the elms are suffering from. We had to go in there and take these trees down um, without damaging them though, so some of the loggers and tree guys that I work with you know, had to go up there without cleats or anything and just take it down very slowly. Chris did the, the structural part and I added the pulls which were cast from real mushrooms that we found on our walks. So each one that we make, I get to be Mother Nature and grow the, grow the fungus along there. I think people were surprised it's taken us so long or that we hadn't done it on our own. But truthfully, I think as artisans, we each, this is our work, our daily work. And I'm proud, I'm really proud of what we made together.